to Al Jazeera and reminder of our top stories this hour. The Saudi-led coalition has announced a ceasefire in Yemen. It's set to last two weeks and will come into effect on Thursday. The Saudi-led coalition has been fighting Houthi rebels since the war began in 2015. Despite calls from the World Health Organization to stop politicizing the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. president has once again criticized the agency's actions. Donald Trump says the WHO has been unfair to the world by taking decisions that favor China. Global trade is expected to fall by up to a third this year as the pandemic brings economic activity to a standstill. The head of the World Trade Organization says this may be the deepest global recession in living memory, worse than the financial crisis 12 years ago. Now, like many other nations in Africa, Rwanda is struggling to carry out enough daily tests for Mm, coronavirus. mm, The number mm. of infections is rising, despite the government ordering an almost total lockdown three weeks ago. Catherine Soy reports. Here we go. Rwanda's government opens the Kanyinya Coronavirus Reception Center to journalists for the first time. It's a rare move on the outskirts of the capital, Kigali to publicize and reassure 12 million Rwandan citizens that all is under control and to show the world how the country is dealing with the pandemic. We are at stage of um, trying to size the outbreak in the country because we, we have our first cases uh, already in country since uh, 14th of March. 88% are imported cases, means we have few cases that are uh, confirmed by contact with uh, with those imported cases. Several patients are being monitored at this center for around 80 people and at a second specialist hospital too. Health workers say none of the sick require intensive care, but there are enough ventilators for those who may fall seriously ill. Rwanda has about 46 ventilators set aside for COVID-19 patients. Many African countries are struggling to keep up with testing. Health officials here say they can test up to 700 people a day. If we detect suspected cases, we'll test them and we'll test them every three days. If they get sick, we'll bring them to this center. The government ordered a total shutdown in late March when the infection rate increased. All borders and airspace have been closed to stop the disease being imported. And it's all hands on deck at this biomedical center as volunteers and government workers keep track of those quarantined in government facilities and at home. We follow them up on a daily basis to see if they have any symptoms, if they have developed any. We uh, refer them and connect them to our rapid response team for evacuation and taking them to different facilities for closer follow-up. Many Rwandans say the emergency response by their government has been swift and robust. Health workers say they're confident that they have the capacity to contain the disease. But they're also concerned that if neighboring countries fail to stem the spread and COVID-19 will be hard to deal with because of the high number of illegal border crossings. Catherine Soy, Al Jazeera. Mm, mm, mm. U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders has ended his bid to be the Democratic Party's presidential nominee. The Vermont senator's exit clears the way for former Vice President Joe Biden to become the party's candidate. Mm. Sanders told his supporters the coronavirus pandemic was a factor in his decision. Mm -hmm. I know that there may be some in our movement who disagree with this decision, who would like us to fight on to the last ballot cast at the Democratic Convention. I understand that position. But as I see the crisis gripping the nation, exacerbated by a president unwilling or unable to provide any kind of credible leadership and the work that needs to be done to protect people in this most desperate hour, I cannot, in good conscience, continue to mount a campaign that cannot win and which would interfere with the important work required of all of us in this difficult hour. Alan Fisher's in Washington and says Sanders' decision is no surprise. Mm -hmm. He's really been politically dead man walking since uh, Super Tuesday. Uh, That was really when Bernie Sanders lost momentum. You remember that Joe Biden didn't do well in the first three contests in the caucuses and the primaries. But then he came back from the political dead in South Carolina 
After that, he immediately got the endorsement from Pete Buttigieg, from Ibn Klobuchar. That was significant and important for him, and he did very well on Super Tuesday. It made things <laughs> very, very difficult. He got for, an endorsement from... Uh... But when he talks about how he has moved the political <laughs> debate in the United States, there's no doubt over the last four years he's done exactly that. People are now talking about providing some sort of universal health care in the United States. They are talking about free state college for people in the United States. He's taught, they are talking about income equality because of the issues that Bernie Sanders has raised. Now, Bernie Sanders did not give an endorsement to Joe Biden. That's not surprising because you don't give away all your cards at the table. He wants to make sure that a lot of the ideas, a lot of the things that he's been talking about will form the platform of the Democratic Convention and also the Democratic election platform as they move in to the uh, presidential campaign. As the coronavirus spreads across <laughs> the U.S., there's a growing movement towards mail-in voting ahead of November's presidential election. But as John Hendren reports, not everyone supports the idea. Of course. After a chaotic and dangerous day at the polls in Wisconsin, there is a growing call for a virus-proof November election. Thinks that we'll probably be moving to um, vote by mail. She wants that provision in the next stimulus bill. This is the scene few want to see again. Wisconsin voters on Tuesday gathering by the thousands to cast their ballots during a deadly global pandemic. This is just all really frustrating, confusing, let alone being out here without a mask and being afraid to even come in the first place. Yeah, With only five I, I, of I feel the anxiety. Milwaukee polling stations able to open, many Wisconsin voters, including a nurse just off her shift, did not get to the front of the serpentine lines to cast their ballots at all. Come on! I'm upset. I really am upset. I wish I had did an absentee ballot or something, but I didn't know it was going to be all this chaos. Now, across the U.S., many Democrats are calling for standardized mail-in balloting, so nothing like Wisconsin's election, which critics call irresponsible and undemocratic, ever happens again hmm. mail ballots early balloting if in fact it turns out in oh, places Lord. around the country they decide you can't do in-person voting this is something we should be planning for now so that if it's needed we're ready to go in november but the mm, move has some high yeah, okay. profile republican critics the president of the united states among them mail ballots are very dangerous thing for this country because they're cheaters Trump, who what? himself voted by mail in Florida <laughs> last month, added on Twitter, it doesn't work out well for Republicans. Y'all y- 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 remember those hanging chads, right? ...to require mail-in balloting in the November right. 3rd presidential election. Election 2000. Americans and much of the world confined <laughs> to their homes. A Reuters Ipsos poll released this week found 79% of Democrats and 65% of Republicans agree with the idea. Mm-hmm. With a Republican-controlled Senate behind him, the president might succeed in blocking an expansion of mail-in voting. That leaves the potential that if the coronavirus lingers or surges again in November, the chaos of Wisconsin could play out across the U.S. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Chicago. Hanging chads. The U.S. chemical weapons <laughs> watchdog has blamed the Syrian government for a series of deadly sarin and chlorine gas attacks against civilians. Our diplomatic editor, James Baines, reports. The saga of the use of chemical weapons in Syria has been long and horrific. But now, finally, the results of a technical investigation that finds the Assad regime responsible. The inquiry by the International Chemical Weapons Body, the OPCW, finds that Al-Latamina in Hama Governorate was attacked three times in March 2017 over a week-long period. Twice, the Syrian Air Force used bombs containing sarin. This is the aftermath of the other occasion, patients being treated for breathing difficulties after an improvised barrel bomb containing chlorine was dropped from a Syrian helicopter onto the hospital in the town. Mm, mm, mm. The report will be delivered to the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. So after such clear findings, is he now prepared to directly condemn the Assad government? Mm -hmm. The Secretary General, uh, his position is unchanged, that any, it is intolerable that anyone, anywhere, uh, use chemical weapons, and impunity for use of these 
uh, is equally uh, unacceptable. And it's imperative to identify and hold those accountable who have used the uh, chemical weapon. So you say it's intolerable for anyone to do this, but the OPCW says that the Assad government did it. Will you not condemn the Assad government? And why are you playing this lame game of not taking sides, trying to be equal to both sides? Aren't you leaving one very important side out of this? And that's the Syrian people who have been gassed and over the last 50 years by the Assad regime have been executed Mm -hmm. and tortured. I think we are on the front lines with the Syrian people. We have been, uh, our humanitarian colleagues have been there throughout, uh, throughout this conflict, trying to support uh, the Syrian people in their daily lives. So why is See, he didn't even answer the question. He didn't even take a side. The answer is Russia, Syria's closest ally. And that's why you're unlikely mm-hmm. to see any accountability for the attacks in this report. The UN Security Council has tried to refer Syria to the International Criminal Court in the past, but Russia, a permanent member, has used its veto. Mm-hmm. James Bay's Al Jazeera yep. at the United Nations. Chemical weapon, that's British terrorism. The driver has pleaded guilty to the manslaughter of 39 people who were found dead in the back of his truck last year. Whew. The bodies of 31 men and eight women were found in southeast England in October, the result of an alleged people smuggling operation. Four other suspects have been charged over the deaths. Dang. Once vibrantly coloured, Australia's Great Barrier Reef has experienced widespread bleaching. Mm-hmm. Record high mm-hmm. water temperatures in February is the main reason coral has been turning white. Scientists say it's a dire warning of the threat posed by climate change to the world's largest living organism. Those coral reefs. Reports uh-uh. It's one of the world's largest coral systems made up of nearly 3,000 separate reefs and 900 islands. The Great Barrier Reef attracts huge numbers of tourists every year, but this underwater treasure is at risk of disappearing due to coral bleaching caused by rising temperatures. Over the past two weeks, James Cook University has surveyed more than a 1,000 reefs. It found they were severely bleached in all three regions of the system, and says it's more widespread than ever before. Mm -mm. This is the third time it's happened in the past five years. If this continues, and we're seeing these mass bleaching events every few years, there just will not be the opportunity for the corals to recover in between these major disturbances. When water is too warm, corals will expel algae that causes them to bleach. In February, the reef recorded its highest sea surface temperature since records began in 1900. While bleaching isn't always fatal, scientists say in severe events like this, many corals don't survive. It really is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And when we think about what the Great Barrier gives Australia, it's its cultural heritage, it's iconic, um, and the tourism industry, all of these facets we will lose instantly if we have another bleaching event of these magnitudes. The reef is highly vulnerable, not only to warming temperatures, but also pollution and coastal development. Scientists say ocean temperatures over the next month will be crucial to how the reef recovers. It's not just in the sea where Australia is feeling the effects of climate change. Of course, severe drought is intensifying bushfires and scientists are calling for stronger climate policy from the government to reduce emissions. Without it, they say the situation will only get worse. Nicola Gage, Al Jazeera, Sydney. Oh, Lord have mercy. That was so much to unpack. That was a lot to unpack. Okay. Courtesy to Al Jazeera English. I know earlier I had put up, what was it, time? The source was time where Governor Cuomo, New York Governor Cuomo, was pretty much live at a press conference, I do believe, in in Albany, New York, uh, answering questions as far as uh, the numbers and, you know, the trending, like, are we plateauing? Well, if the state of New York is plateauing and all and and everything. But yeah, this, this is a lot. 
there there's there's so much so much but those are the daily highlights and that thing at the end i tell you even our whole ecosystem is all off balance so but anyway for some good news <laughs> i know you're like dang that, that was the top stories there's a lot a lot of stuff and then we got people criticizing mail-in voting, saying it's no good, that people can cheat. Well, like I said, I know I had talked over the person reporting, but the hanging chads from the election of 2000 was no different. And also the mid-elections in Ohio in 2006, there were plenty of people once, you know, we had went to a, a computerized system that when they were voting for, what was it? They're voting for the uh, Democratic candidate at the time that it was coming up, George Bush and like what, whatever have you in like 2000. Well, 2006 was midterm. So 2004 uh, and eight, it was one of those, but it, it was a big controversy in Ohio. So, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it, the voting is computerized or whether you're mailing it in like there's always that potential where let's just say people can throw stuff out <laughs> and not count it or whatever have you so i'm not even looking forward to this election in november um right now you know our fearless leader you know <laughs> let's make america great again is saying that november 3rd that the elections will not be postponed. That is what he has said. He said that a few days ago in a press conference. So we shall see. Um, and as far, the reason why I did record this was because, again, I, would, I just wanted to cross-reference uh, Al Jazeera and um, Time. Because my previous recording, uh, whenever... I caught some uh, governor, excuse me, governor uh, Cuomo. It, it, uh, I was, of course, on YouTube and it was streaming through time, through through the YouTube channel time. So I was just cross referencing just to see if, you know, everything was reporting the same or if there was a discrepancy. Because I like to cross reference, particularly when it comes to the media. And at least with Al Jazeera, it's considered it's more of an independent media than, you know, NBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, everybody else. But yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Bernie, he he dropped out, so which really didn't surprise me. Um, and let's just remember our brothers and sisters over there in Africa. Uh, because they, you know, shout out to the um, to the healthcare workers over there. Uh, the government is responding quickly, but unfortunately, again, there's an issue with the you know the ventilators as far as what they need, and as far as testing, you know, because you heard it in that clip, they're able to test up to. Well, they're they're able to test 700 people a day. So just remember our brothers and sisters over there, you know, because again, I don't like it how sometimes they be acting like, you know, as far as in Africa, like, like they don't know how to respond properly or something to anything, to a pandemic or anything, but they do. Now they just need the resources as far as the tests and the um the the ventilators to do what they need to do they already have a plan in place shoot as my mother would say there's always something to pray about so this is season two episode nine yes i recorded just the highlights of the day um courtesy of al jazeera I do not copyright, infringe, or claim other people's stuff. I don't do that. Back to the basics, don't do that. But anyway, 
Shalom. Happy Passover because we are in the season of Passover, Good Friday, and Easter. And yes, I'm going to come right back with episode 10. Yes, we are really grinding through season two. So episode 10 will be coming very soon. I love you. Peace and blessings, everyone.